everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. All right, according to the mayor, his uh, contract has a clause yes. <laughs> where he can leave five uh, at three o'clock on five Wednesdays. Okay. I believe Wednesday's golf day, maybe. It's not like the first Fridays, huh? So, uh, would you please keep a little tab in there? <laughs> just just yeah, right okay. there. Number one, just a little. Let's do it in number one. Mayoral number one. Wednesdays, just write a little one. And okay. then, you know how you do it when you're counting? Yeah. You go one, stick marks. two, three, four. And you, when, when you get the slash through He's there, done. it's done, baby. Okay, mayoral. <laughs> mayoral Wednesdays, Got we it. could just say. Here, and just make it one right there, and like tape it down so it doesn't uh, go anywhere. S- would you A- Y. Is this one? Do we know which well, one this is, is? This is first, I believe, okay. because uh, I don't think he uh, wanted to take any of those when the snow was on the I ground got it. for some reason. Yes, yeah, you know where I'm going to put it? Although I'm today, put it can... today is not ideal. <laughs> yeah, how about right there? That's May good. Oral Wednesdays. May Oral Wednesdays right there. He'll like that way. You know, every time you go over there, though, and I see those blinds. Just makes me sad. You miss the curtains. I miss the drapes. Yeah. I miss those drapes. They were barely <laughs> hanging. They were barely hanging. Yeah, I've had a couple of tasteless remarks about what they reminded me of. My but favorite I think I'll was pass today. I yeah. forget who it was, but yeah. it was a few years ago. Someone went to pull down on the string as to open up the drapes and bring some sunlight in and they Fell right off the <laughs> rack when, drowned when the tug was giveth. Fabric. The good thing is we now have, uh, you know, when we have people who generously donated to the uh, Courage Center. Yeah, Sports auction. Fantasy Auction. Yes, yes mm-hmm. Courage County Auction. And they come in and they make a visit. You don't have to worry about them. Accidentally getting wrapped up in the right. drapes oh. and perhaps doing themselves some damage. And I was trying to got... keep their backs to yeah. this so they yeah. didn't even have to right. look at it because yes. it was so unsightly. Yes, well, they're gone. I wonder. They should have been in the Pavic Museum. Uh, How about that? Just a little <laughs> cut of like a, the Metrodome patch or the uh, the yes. mound. It should yes. have been a little. Yeah, these were what? Yeah, these were the. Uh, these were the. Is that what they did dirt. with the old Metrodome roof? They made patches out they, of yeah, it. Yeah, they sold them, and Cunningham was selling. Jim Cunningham was selling bags. Remember, he sold the bags from the Teflon roof. Oh my mm. God, I didn't know that. Yeah, they and they sold a bunch. They were good. But I don't know if he's still selling them or not. Like a like a grab bag or like yeah, a, like a little duffel or huh? And all sorts of different sizes. There's I think uh, you Google Metrodome bags. They, I, they come I told out. you guys about uh, how uh, when we were off in Florida, my uh, bride for a fee convinced her younger sister. To, who's a great organizer to organize. Mm-hmm. And we found enough dental floss. Oh, that's right. To take care of the people who were on the Normandy beach right. if they wanted clean teeth. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. Well, I noticed the other day that I was trying to find Ziplocs, right? Ziploc <laughs> yeah. bags. Okay, yeah, where do you need a Ziploc? And I thought, man, we don't, I got to get some new Ziplocs. And as I was walking out, I glanced to my left and there's kind of a shelf in the. Uh, Three, like four temporary type. shelves in the garage there. Oh. <laughs> Got to be eight bags, of, eight <laughs> boxes of Ziplocs who've been there. Somebody went like, to Sam's Club. <laughs> Some of them have been 12 years. So you canceled Probably that trip. Cost. Yeah, I didn't have to go get Ziplocs. That's for sure. I so, did not have to go get Ziplocs. I'm trying to think because I'm sure it was discussed when we, when we bulldozed the Metronome, but was there ever an item that you would have, whether it was... Um, a piece of memorabilia or something that would have marked the, that time path that you would have wanted from the Metrodome? Because I don't uh, think you're a rough guy. I can guy. answer for him. He would have wanted, if it was available, the big sign over the first baseline, we, we like, like it, it here. here. That would have been fine. <laughs> I think 
I would have liked, you know how people wanted Harmon's seat from the old Met yes. Stadium where it went upstairs? Yeah. I'd like the seat where McGuire hit the home run off Frankie Rodriguez, <laughs> where Puck then, when he was, you know, when he was fighting what turned out yeah. to be career-ending uh, and Glaucoma. down there stretching in left field. And all of a sudden, in the empty stadium, you hear this blood-curdling scream, Frankie! Frankie! <laughs> and Puck's up there in what he thinks is the seat at the top of the first deck saying, Frankie, you look like an ant down there. <laughs> so he was, you know, he was worried about his career. He was worried right. about his vision, but he, he still, still had time to agitate in the truest <laughs> spirit of baseball. You know what? Right? That's a good teammate right <laughs> yes, there. That's right. what that is. Frankie. <laughs> you look like an ant like down a, there. And there might have been a couple of adjectives before sure, we right, got to right. ant there. Imagine but that. That was, uh, that was uh, one of my favorite. You know, I really... Met Stadium because, and it's been a big topic of discussion this week since today's the day the North Stars left, mm-hmm. officially, even though we knew they were leaving. But uh, the big topic of discussion is the sports memories. I know Judd, and they're always they're trying to get Judd to get worked up about his sports memories, and he made the good point. They all come from your youth, mm-hmm. you know, the thing you really right. are emotional about. And Met Stadium, I got a lot of stuff that, uh, you know, that, that the, the Metrodome, I didn't, let's face it, for a newspaper man, it was great. You played every game and you walked right down the steps and there was the, there was the club. Sure. You know, it was great. And it was a, no fun to go in there on a Sunday afternoon in the middle of the summer, but it was great. But there's nothing that I don't have any emotional link to it. To me... Dave St. Peter, like when they were building Target Field, I told him, you got to have the red and the gold and the brown and the yellow and the the bricks that you had at Met Stadium. Yeah. When I was, I mean, the, they had this, it was like they got a discount sale on bricks and they just took whatever <laughs> color they could get. <laughs> but it was when you were a kid, man, and you drove around at, all of a sudden you drove around a corner and you saw the stadium, man. It was, uh, oh yeah, it was uh, fantastic. But uh, that uh, Dave said, no, uh, we're going to go with the limestone. We're going to, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was a good choice. The limestone's the a nice button. look. Yeah, yeah. I said, oh, well, okay. That's, uh, that's fine. I remember but, that. The giraffe lot. Uh, oh yeah. All right. that stuff in the, you know, just, and I was a uh-huh. kid and we didn't go to, we went to, I don't know, not every game, but we went to a lot of games, and I remember it just uh, it being an event. And we, I never sat in you know third the dugout seats. No. We were always out in the left field or uh, right field. Although you know, if you went when they were bad in those years, you could park in the fifth. You know, you were seventy five feet from the entrance. You know, I mean, they well, had some small crowds. Oddly there. enough, I remember my dad uh, taking us to a lot of halter top. Okay, games. I well, don't know what the, yeah, I don't know what that connection <laughs> you know, was. No, the but kicks I get a lot, a lot of, of credit. The kicks, I, I see a lot of people referring to the kicks halter top games, but they stole that idea from the uh, the, the twins were first. I remember Don the Cassidy, halter top. Don Cassidy came with the twins' flimsy blue halter top, and uh, it was one tie around the neck, and yeah, then one tie. And, and you're basically fighting. saying. Go free bird. Let, yeah, let, right. you know, you're, yeah, you're, right. you're, you're so that, that's promoting. all that was required to be worn was the no. They gave them away. Oh, they gave away twins halter tops. And then did the female the, public then? Couple no, of them. And, they were the, 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 the young there. gals would go in the bathroom and. And this wasn't on. met with uh, met sexism stadium. and all that. No, no, it, we were rampantly in favor of sexism. <laughs> yeah, we were in the seventies. You know, forty young, years ago, <laughs> sexism. Did you ever watch Mad Men? No. I mean, oh, that's that was, true. You know, that's what that was, was a young Catholic schoolboy. You know, you kind of whoa! Yeah. I, what is this? That so the, the Mikulski one. family never missed halter top. Halter day. top day damn near killed my good friend Bob Doder. Why? I told you by the late great Bob Doder, the UPI funniest guy that ever yeah. lived. Cynical died way too young, but he had a one eye, you know, mm-hmm. and he had a patch. But every time a good-looking girl would walk by, he'd lift up the patch. <laughs> <laughs> So he could get a better look. See, very sexist, very funny. You can be both. You can be both.
Right. The, right. The, the gals back. I mean, we're coming off the 60s, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, the revolution. Oh, the 70s and, are crazier. You know, people think there's a lot of partying and craziness and drugs so, now. There was the 70s were nuts. So, Pat, back, it was Bob, you said, was your was your Bob buddy with Dorr, the pants? yeah. So, did he gain depth perception <laughs> when he'd lift up the patch? Oh, I or was think it, it was, uh, I think it was a joke. Yeah. It was ah, a joke. Okay. It was just him saying, there's that one. young yeah, lady that is so good looking. I'm going to see if this thing will <laughs> come back to life. <laughs> he added another color scheme to the I, to the I, view. I think it was glass, but he still had hope for it when the uh, when the young lady came back. All righty, we shall return. No mayor. It's. Wednesday, number one. I'm putting it up here so you can reference it over my shoulder every day, every Wednesday. Here is a halter top update from uh, Kevin. Kevin, what is your halter top tale from Met Stadium? June 26, 1977, bus trip down from the Gladiator Bar in Gilbert. Oh, okay. <laughs> a second, second deck, uh, own private beer vendor. We're just, just off of uh, home plate a little bit, and there were so many standing ovations with Rodney's home runs. Four hundred. Oh, that game, yeah. Glenn, Glenn Adams, everything. But what you missed, and every time I hear this story, uh, you missed... In either the bottom half of the seventh or the top of the eighth, uh, a tall blonde in a black halter top got up to use the restroom and from that drunken crowd received a standing ovation <laughs> from at least 12,000 people. And, and, and she knew it, and she was a little bit embarrassed on the way to the restroom. You know, she sort of yes. reddened up, uh, but on the way back. She put on the show. On the way back, she bought into it. She was waving. She got another yeah. standing you know, and, and I think to this day, Patrick, I think to this day some... 41 years later, that that day she may have made a career change. (laughs) (laughs) Well, uh, you couldn't have been a very old fella then. Well, I was, uh, well, I was in, uh, I was, that was the summer before I got married. So. Okay. All right. Well, the uh, collection but, from Gilbert, and there might have been a little beer on the bus coming down, I would think, huh? We were, if you, if truth be told, we got drunk and sobered up about four or five times. <laughs> because we were drunk, we were drunk when we got there, and then it was so hot. Yeah. And we had, and we had to wait to the stadium because there yeah. was, uh, they had so many walk-ups. Right. So they held up the game, so... And then we got our own private beer vendor because back then they carried two cases yes. and, and they poured the bottles and and we had and because we, because we had about fifty guys that we had they would he would ignore other people and just come to us because he was no he was going to sell out. There was no change that ever came back, you know, and, and he would just go down and and. Uh, and toward the end of the day, some of the old guys had to go over to the Marriott because they couldn't take the sun. <laughs> so then, then he might only sell out, say, 42 and 43. Then he sold to the other people in the neighborhood. <laughs> Otherwise, they had to watch. Hey, is that uh, restaurant that had the Caribbean flair in Gilbert and the... Uh, and I think the uh, the great lady that ran it uh, died. Is that still going? Yeah, it's it's under new ownership, and it's going. And truth be told, it's been under new. It's been operating for about three. I don't know how many years it's been operating, and I haven't returned. If Tony is not there, see uh, Tony. Uh, I worked with Tony for uh, for a while at uh, at U.S. Steel uh, in my in my earlier days, and he. Uh, Got to know him there before he opened up the restaurant, and I don't know what happened to him, but uh, the, the, it's, it, why go there if Tony's not there? And his wife passed away, right? Yeah, she pa- uh, yeah, yeah she very passed young. Away. That's that's she too was, bad. She was a wonderful lady too, and yeah. uh, you know, just you know, life goes on. What was the name of that place? What the they whist- call- it was and still is the Whistling Bird. Whistling Bird, man, was that good. That was terrific, and it was, uh, it was great when my Twin Cities friends would come up and they would <laughs> let's 
Let's go to a, I want to see one of the ethnic Iron Range restaurants. <laughs> so and you... I say, sure, we'll go to a Whistling Bird. They say, what kind of a, they're looking for Slovenian, Italian yeah. or something, you know. And, I, and they'd say, uh, well, what kind of an ethnicity is, is the Whistling Bird? I said, Jamaican. <laughs> they, said, they said, you got Jamaicans on the range? We got one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for the tale. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, uh, you remember Melanie Clemens? Sure, right? oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, Melanie was uh, from a, had lived up there. Okay. And she was with us, and we had an event at Boabic, but we all had to go to the Whistling Bird and eat dinner. And uh, oh, and that's we, how you that's it, how you it, learned of it. Yeah, we and we came in. Well, we knew it was there, and right. Melanie with us. But like we walk in and we say, and they three or four guys say, "Hey, Melanie, how you doing?" And we're saying, "Boy, you're." you know, <laughs> They even you're know back. you on the range up here, man. <laughs> <laughs> you're, I didn't know you were that famous, dear. But uh, anyway, she oh. was. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that. That was a great restaurant. And the, the guy, what was funny was, it was a Jamaican guy who was married to this Iron Range gal, and uh, she did the cooking, and he was the. Ma- <laughs> Oh, she did all she the cooking. Had, well, he had the Jamaican recipes, but he turned. He was the guy who greeted everybody. Hey, man, come in, in yeah, he did. The, That's he, what he they're laid it for. on thick, and then she was in the back cooking great food. So it was great. Come on in, Mervyn, man. You know, uh, Myron, come. You I also been, like. Have you ever been to that town, Gilbert? Oh, uh, no, have not been. I don't think I have either. I don't think One our hockey took us through. Towns in America. Really? Their main, you could eat off their main street when I was up there. And why? Have you been up there, Kenny? Yeah, it's a nice little town. Yeah, it's, yeah. and it's, uh, you know, you could park semis on the front. And there's so much, the main street is so large, but I, it's impeccable. I like that they toured down on a du- double decker bus from the Gladiator Bar, too. <laughs> That's the name of a bar in a small town, man. That's right. And they were. Way back, way back in the day, a uh, powerhouse in uh, state basketball. They won, I think, they won the one class state tournament in the late forties once. Gilbert was. Yep. Hmm. Yep. They, uh, but uh, we're really a really good town. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, the the press box was at the uh, top of the first deck. We weren't in the second deck, so that's why we would have missed the young lady who went to the bathroom. I love that she got a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that story? Lady in a black halter top. I missed that. No. Oh, uh, it was uh, during a halter top it was game. The, uh, well, the, she was just there in a halter top. It was oh, the that was famous. It. it was the famous June 26, 1977 game when Rodney, his batting average went up to 406, and it was a beautiful, gorgeous day, and they had about 20,000, the largest regular seating crowd ever at Met Stadium. Mm. And Rodney got about 12 standing ovations. And Glenn Adams knocked in eight runs, and nobody even knew he was there, you know. So they, Ed, Rodney got twelve, and that young lady got one. And they edged the White Sox that day, nineteen to twelve. Wow! But in Kenny, a, this gal had a black halter top on, this blonde, <laughs> and she got up to go to the restroom, and she was walking up the stairs, and she got a standing ovation from the um, from, from the deck, from the second deck, from the second from the deck, the entire deck, basically. from the entire deck where everybody was cheering, and then she when she came back, she kind of she played she, in. She played so, into it. And this guy suggests she maybe got a new occupation, but we don't know that. Right, <laughs> we Drew. don't know that yeah. for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay. Let's take well, a break. Here. Yeah, we'll take a break. And day one of the uh, mayor's early leaving on Wednesdays is almost uh, past. This Mayoral year. Wednesday, gotta, number one. Number one, one yes. Uh, sports talk will return. We've got Bruce Vale waiting in the wings. He's got the Your Money Now report, and it comes to us courtesy of Owatonna's own Federated Insurance. Brucey. Doesn't he leave early Fridays also? Let's uh, let's not talk okay, about that. Okay, what's going okay. on around there? All right. Today's ending with a Y. <laughs> oh, I, that's it. i got to get on that schedule. Uh, stocks were higher at today's market close, led by gains in energy shares following President Trump's decision to exit from the Iran nuclear deal. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 182 points, closing at 24,542. The Nasdaq Composite rose 73 points, and the S&P 500 gained 25. Wells Fargo is being sued by 
by a Minnesota family that is in the state's witness protection program. The lawsuit claims the bank compromised the family's privacy by sending mail to what was supposed to be a secret location after the mother applied for a mortgage while under protection. The lawsuit claims the family received mail from other senders as well, signaling that Wells Fargo sold the family's information to outside vendors. United Parcel Service and the Teamsters Union are discussing a two-tier wage system that would allow the company to hire lower-paid workers to deliver packages on weekends, including Sundays, as the delivery giant looks for more ways to manage the surge in e-commerce. I'm Bruce Vail with your Money Now on 1500 ESPN. Okay, thank you very much, Bruce. We'll cut you loose and check traffic here. This one's sponsored by Concordia University. We'll kick it between the downtowns, where Eastbound 94 has been dealing with heavy drama a first broken down school bus at Lexington that's gone and now we have a crash at Wabasha it's on the right shoulder in the downtown commons planned for a 25 minute drive between westbound between a little quicker at 15 and then we have northbound 52 all backed and stacked over the Lafayette River Bridge that's due in part to a wreck on the right side on the bridge get on track to a successful business career with Concordia University St. Paul learn online or on campus <laughs> Trump canceling the Iran deal was causing energy prices to go up, but I just looked it up. I didn't realize Iran was the third largest oil producer. And they got uh, a lot of oil. And uh, so the, uh, the they're happy as hell that because uh, now this dri- might drive up oil prices. And I think we know why Saudi Arabia is so against this deal. That's going to make their oil more valuable. <laughs> right. Right. So. Anyway, I was, that's... I, so you basically summarized it for all of us. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was going to ask John, but then oh. I just looked it up. Yeah, I, w- the, I wouldn't know. Yeah, John. The, the, Guard, the Guardian had a little quick little piece on it. So. Saudi Arabia today threatened, uh, you know, if Iran starts uh, going back to nuclear stuff, they, they might, you know, take some action. So Yeah, well, uh, they might I don't bomb, know. Bomb them. The, the, the kingdom over there probably is, uh, might, might not want to get too frisky. <laughs> You don't want one of them uh, uprisings by the uh, people, by the by the population that would throw them out of business. No. By what do they call them? The the company, you mm-hmm. know, like with the, yes. the torches and pitchforks. Yes. The rest of the yes. actors. Yes. 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 Here's I'm John with the news. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's Playing the role of Joe Souchere yeah. today is Kenny Olson. <laughs> cloudy and 61 degrees. Uh, can I do sports first, Kenny? Yes. I don't care what you do. Just start talking. <laughs> Twins are off. Uh, they'll open up a four-game series against the Angels out on the West Coast tomorrow. Uh, Bill writes, Patrick, that Gilbert won it in 1951. He says, both my dad and uncle played on the championship team. Well, I bet they were named Simonovich or something like who did that. They, uh, who, who did they win, beat? <laughs> that I don't know. I can look it up, though. Oh, 1951. Soccer on the station tonight. Minnesota United taking on the Los Angeles Football Club on the West Coast. 8.30 pregame, 9 o'clock kickoff. This is the new team in the beautiful new stadium out in L.A. It's supposed to be fantastic. I uh, I looked up the, uh, I always have to look up the name to make mm-hmm. sure I get it right, hoping it'd be something exciting. And when I found out it was just football club, I was, okay. I was a little disappointed. Yeah, they don't have, we don't have a nickname for them No, yet. it's just Los, it's LAFC Los Angeles Football What's Club. What's their mascot yeah. then, I wonder? Mm-hmm. Do they have a phrase like "we're scarves up"? What is their uh, what is their catchphrase? Sunglasses up? Or? I don't. I don't really know. Okay. Kenny Gilbert beat Canby sixty nine to fifty two. Two small schools. Two mm-hmm. small oh. schools. Uh, news notes from today: the body of a woman who had been missing since January has been found. Uh, WDIO reporting: thirty year old uh, Tana Jolie Pringle was last seen January sixth in Floodwood. Her pickup truck found on February seventh southeast of Babbitt in northern Lake County. Lake County Sheriff's Office says Pringle's body was located yesterday after her family and friends began a search with law enforcement and search and rescue members. The Sheriff's Office says it does not appear there was any foul play. They said Pringle's death likely caused by hypothermia and exposure to extreme cold. An autopsy is planned. So the, uh, we're figuring the truck stalled out on her and she tried to walk mm-hmm. someplace. Mm-hmm. The Minnesota Department of Health says 10 cases of E. coli associated with romaine lettuce from the Yuma region have been reported now here in Minnesota. According to MDH, the illness onset dates range from April 20th to May 2nd. Cases have been reported both in the metro area and rural counties, according to the MDH. MDH said three of the cases have resulted in hospitalization. 
Uh, two of the cases have resulted in a potentially fatal complication, which includes kidney failure. Oof, yeah. yeah. The warning about romaine lettuce initially involved bagged or chopped romaine, but now is expanded to include all types of romaine lettuce from the Yuma, Arizona region. Lettuce, huh? I think I'm safe. Unless it's uh, unless you, your, unless you could get it from a BLT or something or a anyway. taco, yeah, right. <laughs> Emergency crews ordered Hawaiian residents to leave their homes after two new fissures uh, opened up near the Kilauea v- uh, volcano. Almost a week after it started a series of huge explosions, people in the Lanapuna Gardens neighborhood in the southeast corner of Big Island were told there was an immediate danger. Uh, Kilauea started spewing fountains of lava as high as 300 feet into the air today. Walls of molten rock destroyed houses in the southeastern corner of the island as the volcanic gases rose through cracks in the earth. About 1,700 people already have been ordered to leave their properties. No deaths or major injuries have been formed. But uh, two new fissures, the 13th and 14th, formed and started releasing toxic gases on Tuesday. The one time I was on the Big Island, they have one out there that's been rolling out lava for right years. Right into the water. Yeah, right yeah. into the water. Yeah. And we w- walked out on it. You could walk out on it, and it's amazing how fast it turns solid. Right. You know, and it hits it hits the water, and basically mm-hmm. it's solid. And, uh, you know, but you gotta you don't want to take that one step too far when you're out there walking <laughs> Burn on Burn your shoe. You, right. Yeah, you right. can get a bad foot. Are, there, have there been any predictions made on how long uh, this is going to last, or is it going to get worse? Is said, it going to no. explode? What's going to happen here, John? the end of the island and some of those other islands going to go away? They actually thought at one point that it was uh, sort of, quote, under control, whatever that means. Uh, but now with the new stuff today, uh, obviously not. Have you guys seen the, we had a long discussion about it mm-hmm. on GL, the video of the Mustang getting swallowed by the lava? Uh, Pat and I don't listen to GL. <laughs> well, got the much better vi- Mustang the, automobile the, or the, the, yeah. video, Horse. the video is all over the it's internet, cool. Kenny, okay. for the last three days. It basically so. disintegrates the vehicle. I've seen it. Mm-hmm. I didn't need a radio show to direct me there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You know, John, they probably didn't teach you this in North Dakota, but all those islands are volcanic. uh, Did you know that, John? That's where they came from. Interesting. Yes. Okay, but let me ask this question. (laughs) When it cools, when it goes across uh, Main Street in Hawaii, whatever, wherever it is, and it cools, are they able to bulldoze that through, or has this changed the landscape of wherever it is? You can Flowing. remove it. Yes, you can. You can once you it can cools. Remove it. Yes. Okay, but if there's too much of it, then you're in trouble. Right, Pat. We also discovered in that conversation on GL that vehicle that was disintegrated by the hot lava. What year was it? Newgate will still take it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you got, if you can get it over there, you can call the tow truck and get it over I'm there. I'm sure there. Such wanted to know what year it was. The Mustang. Well, he, yeah, yeah. well, Such didn't like the video because it wasn't a fancy enough car. It wasn't a nice Mustang. It was one of the six cylinders that came out, you know, a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, back. Kenny would say a it, practice yeah. Mustang. Yeah, He's practice so Mustang. pompous, isn't he? That's <laughs> too pedestrian. Hey, Pat, did you explain what the new sign above the calendar is there in that room to Kenny? Uh, see that little... Should have posted up there the post-it, post-it note there. up there? Joe, Joe claims that he gets five Wednesdays where he can leave early. Yeah. yeah. So we got one. We're keeping track. We've we marked got, it. Today's we number, number one. number one's up there now. Uh, the mayoral Wednesdays. We're keeping track. For a guy that wants to re-sign for a few years, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> He dot, sure dot, does dot. take a lot of time <laughs> off. We got to be careful that Boy. we told Kenny about that, though, because Kenny might just be smart enough to go grab a couple of, <laughs> uh, uh, put, put a, it another down. two or no, three up there. This is the official accounting, okay. Joe. You've All already right. taken we three. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, you really? Get three in. <laughs> I thought Bruce had the best line, though, since he's yeah. not here in the building. He doesn't know. Doesn't he already get off early on Friday? <laughs> he does, Bruce, yeah. As a matter of fact. I hope the mayor isn't listening. He'll be very upset. Mm. I think his policy on sports talk is the same as mine. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. St. Paul police say a vehicle pursuit this morning ended with the driver being taken into custody in Lake Elmo. Sergeant Mike Ernster, the department's public info officer, said the chase began when officers tried to stop a van without license plates. Conversion van. Was it a felony van, if you will? Oh, really? Yeah. The van. Go ahead, John. Van fled, led officers onto the I 35E north and east on Highway 36. Stop sticks were deployed before the chase ended with a pit maneuver in Lake Elmo. Uh, nobody injured in the It incident. was a fantastic 
chase. Oh, the guy was hauling, huh? Yeah, I watched it and uh, threw a bunch mm-hmm. of pictures up on Twitter, and yeah, it was. Ca- did he cause any accidents? Uh, one, he caused one crash, um, but he it wasn't that fast. I don't think they were at any time were they going faster than eighty miles an hour. Uh, but it was a lot of fun watching them place the stop sticks, mm-hmm. and then as soon as the van hits them, the stop sticks are attached to a rope or a cable. They pull them out sure. of there right yeah. away, and it was less than a half a mile later. This guy lost; he couldn't go anymore, and they mm-hmm. uh, they got him. Hmm. Yeah, I just never figure out how you think you're going to outrun somebody, especially, especially during rush in yeah. a beat up old <laughs> felony <laughs> van. You got no shot, pal. Um, but the one thing he was throwing stuff out the window for the uh, oh, length okay. of the chase. might have been Clothing. particles, so, uh, socks. Maybe that's the reason the chase went on so long. He was trying to get rid of all the stuff. <laughs> they uh, wrapped up uh, the what a uh, dummy the World Snooker Championships this week. Okay, uh, it was won by Mark Williams, and he stayed true to his word after clinching his third World Snooker title. Uh, he retired. Nope, he conducted his post match news conference. But naked, oh. and, and why? Why did we want that? Uh, we, he wanted it. Apparently, he had he had promised if he won, he would strip off all his clothes. No, everybody said no. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's we believe right, you. We got it. You don't Thanks, have anyway. to. But. He, he beat Scotland's John Higgins eighteen sixteen in a dramatic final to become the event's oldest winner for forty years. He said, it's an unbelievable story. Twelve months ago, I was thinking of just retiring. Now here I am, winning the twenty eighteen World Championship naked. Naked. Okay. Yep. Hey. Who knows what they're doing in snooker? I have no idea. You're nope. trying to pull. You're trying to put the ball in a hole. I got that uh, snicker. I, it's yeah. no, snooker. I don't get it. It's more involved. It's all, you know. You, you, Why do you have to complicate a good thing? They don't have any pockets. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't get it. Don't get it. <laughs> all right, Johnny. Thank you. We'll be back. Yep. You are playing this because Patrick mentioned the bricks at Met Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> See, see that tie-in? <laughs> yep. Good. In California. Yes. Thought I'd wait for it. Thank you. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Mountain View police are investigating a strange kidnapping case after they say a homeless man forced his way into a stranger's car and made him drive to KFC. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. Yeah. <laughs> it would take a while. They got rid of about half the KFCs in town here. You'd yeah. be hard to find. Will you sell for Popeye's uh, <laughs> hijacker? Police mm-hmm. well, said the driver, a 31-year-old San Jose man, was looking for a parking space near 14th and Santa Clara <laughs> streets when 21-year-old Alberto Avia allegedly opened the door to the passenger seat, got into the car, and demanded the driver take him anywhere he wanted to go. According Fire to, leaves. According to the victim, <laughs> Avia threatened to physically harm the driver if he didn't comply. Driver did as he was told. Avia told him to drive to KFC on El Camino Real and Castro Street. However, police said once the driver parked the car, instead of getting out to get chicken, Avia tried to rob him. Police said the San Jose man then got out of the car, began to run away from Avia. That's when the suspect got into the driver's seat and allegedly chased the victim across the street. <laughs> Officers, fi- officers finally got there, stopped the vehicle, and arrested a via. Police said nobody was injured in the whole thing. You had a chicken-related tweet, Pat. What was it about? Was it canes? Raising canes. Ooh, I found out yeah. there's a second one on campus. Uh, really? Yeah. There you is? Know that 15th Avenue, when you take a left to go you know, off university, mm-hmm. you take a left and you go by the athletic facilities and stuff. That old building on the corner has now got a raising cane. Oh, in it. boy. So, and there's but, also one inside yeah, of Kaufman, yeah, I think. One. But no, that's, uh, that's Chick fil A. Are, oh. are they accessible by vehicle? Or do you have to park and walk yeah, and do all that? Both of them to park and walk. Yeah. There's another one. There's one, been one on campus for a long time, but it's so damn crowded that uh, I, I thought, but this one must be new. I just found out about two minutes from my house. That's what they're building. Woo! They tore down a gas station. That'd just be bad started, for me. Just started rebuilding, and I asked what they're building. The mm-hmm. Midas guys next. They said, "Yep, that's going to be a raisin cane." Oh man, they so. do business. One on Robert is constantly busy. Man, they do business with the. How about it? Uh, these college kids are. Uh, yeah, but they love it. Yep. Daytona Beach, Florida. Ninety-five-year-old grandmother was arrested Saturday after police said she slapped her granddaughter in the face with her slipper <laughs> before oh. calling nine one one to get her out of the house. According to the Daytona Beach News Journal, Hattie Reynolds told police her granddaughter, Janine Williams, 46 years old, 
wouldn't get out of bed, and that she was, quote, tired of her staying in bed all day soaking up the air conditioning. <laughs> and Is that how that it works? Just, it's that slow burn, too. I know she's soaking up the air conditioning right now. And the great Jamel Hill uh, brought this to my attention with the tweet saying, Biggest, she had this, I was, that quote, and then she said, biggest off- offenses in a black house, slamming doors, running up the electricity, <laughs> drinking, eating the last of anything, and air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Grandma just slapped her with she a slipper, and they took her to jail for that. When the uh, cops got Wait, there. they took grandma to jail? Yes. They did, yeah. What the hell? Well, when, when she hit her with a slipper. Well, it's grandma's house. Yeah. When police got there, uh, the younger gal, the 46-year-old, told police she didn't want to press charges, uh, but because of, quote, strict domestic violence laws in <laughs> Florida, Reynolds was arrested. Break. Cuff her and stuff her. You should uh, read the responses to J- Jamel Hill's <laughs> tweet from all the, all the black gals who got bro- brought up by Mama. I said, I'm, I'm glad I had Grandma to hit me with my <laughs> slipper every once in a while. <laughs> Uh, Grandma was booked in the uh, Volusia County Jail at <laughs> and release. And she didn't get out till the next day. Next day on wow. her cognizant. What country <laughs> is this? <Yes. laughs> and that even bothered Grandma more that that girl was sitting at home then all day <laughs> soaking up all she of it. She probably turned the air conditioning <laughs> down even lower. Came in, it was 50 degrees. <laughs> I'm on Grandma's side. I am too. In Texas, three well-meaning people suffered bites when the kittens they rescued after hearing them making noise in the San Antonio alley turned out to be ravenous bobcat cubs. <laughs> oh, my God, you idiots. Oh, jeez. The caretakers found the blue-eyed, stub-tailed pair of young bobcats and thinking they were Bengal kittens, took them in. They fed the bobcats milk from pet feeding bottles. <laughs> Cute. Until they gouged their eyes out. Well, well lucky they, mom didn't find them. They said they realized something was amiss when the animals tore the bottles apart and then bit them. <laughs> Jeez. They called animal control officers and a wildlife rescue group took the cats away. Uh-huh. Did you say they had rabies? Or you, no, you no, said no. ravenous. ravenous. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, no. Did you guys see the story about the police officer that killed the woodchuck? Oh no, my God. I, I didn't whole, read it. I just saw the world's video. mad at yeah. this guy because he shot a, you know, a woodchuck. They're a pest. Was, yeah, I know. They deserve to die. The guy deserves a medal. <laughs> was he sitting in the ditch or what? Yeah, he had rabies. He was just stumbling oh. around, acting stupid. So are we getting people protesting, dressing most, up in woodchuck they costumes? They are the most passive animal in the world, though. They just well, sit there and eat a little grass. No, the Patrick, they sit there and wait for you to, to hit them, actually. I mean, I, yeah. I told you the time it took me seven shots. <laughs> <laughs> the, guy, the dummy didn't move. He just sat there and looked at me. I finally hit him. Jeez. But they don't do any harm, do they? They, uh, they do when they get in your buildings. Yeah, okay. that's why I'm shooting them. Okay. They get in the buildings. Well, I they just look kind of helpless and just sit there in the ditch and don't bother anybody. But that doesn't mean you can't shoot them. Yeah, I didn't read the story, Kenny, because I knew people would be mad about it. And I thought, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. That's why Kenny just brought it up. Uh-huh. Yeah, it filled my heart with joy. <laughs> <laughs> Authorities say two people who made a bet now know how far their car can go into the water and still drive at a Lake Havasu Beach in western Arizona. The answer, not very far. Mm-hmm. What makes it even worse, the Mojave County Sheriff's Office had to come there because the water disabled the vehicle as it entered the water, causing it to become stuck when it was halfway submerged. Well, they investigated one of the occupants of the vehicle had an active misdemeanor arrest warrant out for ah, But they were doing this to see how far they could go? Yeah, they bet to see how far they could oh, go between okay. the two of them All right. to see who'd be more correct. Well, that's, uh... The fellow with the warrant was taken into custody, booked into jail at the Mojave County Adult Detention Facility. A sheriff spokesman, a woman, Anita Mortensen, said sheriff's personnel arranged for the vehicle to be towed from the lake because it couldn't be driven For away. brain power, that ranks right up there with bringing a couple of bobcats in the yeah, house, doesn't uh, it? Yeah, pretty, pretty close. Right. You've had some geniuses today there, Johnny. Pretty, pretty darn close. All right. All right, sir. Thank you. You bet. To be your best every day, you need proven quality sleep every night. Science proves your best sleep is vital to your mental, emotional, and physical health. And that's where the Sleep Number Bed comes in. And let me tell you, ever since I've had it, my Sleep IQ score is just going higher and higher. And did you know 8 out of 10 couples say that one of them sleeps too hot or too cold? 
Science tells us regulating your sleep temperature leads to higher quality sleep. For many couples, temperature struggles are a real challenge. So here are some tips to help you both sleep just right. Look for beds designed with temperature benefits such as the new Sleep Number Climate 360 Smart Bed that actively warms and cools each side so you both sleep blissfully comfortable. And now save 40% on the Sleep Number 360 Special Edition Smart Bed. Plus, special financing for a limited time. Only at Sleep Number stores or sleepnumber.com slash podcast one. Sleep Number, the official sleep and wellness partner of the National Football League. Subject to credit approval, minimum monthly payments required. See sleepnumber.com for details.